It's a beautiful morning in the garden, and believe it or not, I am out here after the hip surgery. I am uh, using a cane. I left the walker and am now using a cane. Um, if you followed from my last video, I was having hip surgery. I thought it would take me longer to be getting out in the garden, but I'm out here. I can't do a lot. I can't carry anything, and I can't... Uh, my flexibility isn't there, so I can't be leaning over and weeding or anything like that, but I can uh, get out and point to things. <laughs> so so here I am. So yeah, pretty excited about that. And uh, I can, standing up at the potting bench, I can, I can work on some seeds, which is definitely what I need to be doing right now. We've got a lot of weeding to do here, but I also, you know, now's kind of the push for getting all the seeds in the trays and everything for this last kind of four to six week period before our, our presumed last frost date here in the Portland metro area. All right, well, that's a, just a quick update for where I'm at personally and, uh, and how I'm enjoying uh, the beautiful weather out here this morning. Well, just a quick greenhouse update and something I hope I can try to remember for next year is that March seems to be the time. I recall this from prior years as well, um, but I didn't think about it too hard going into this year is that March seems to be the time when it's heating up in the greenhouse. So the sun's coming out, it's hitting at the right angle throughout the day. So I got to open these doors in the morning because um, it gets, without the doors open, it gets past 85 degrees in there by the hottest part of the day. And outside right now in the spring, you know, we're hitting high 60s on a good day. Um, uh, so it's still not that warm outside, but you know, with the sun and the greenhouse during the day, it definitely can get really hot. And that will fry some of the plants and seedlings that I have in here if I don't keep it uh, cooler in there. Um, so we're definitely in a transition period in the garden. Spring is on and we're, we're going for it. Well, as you'll see behind me here, we have planted some of the sweet peas in the ground. Well, we planted all of the sweet peas in the ground. I started them in cell trays and then we put them we made holes and put the plugs in the holes here just along the fruit tree corridor. So ideally the vines will grow up around the fruit trees and we'll have uh, sweet pea flowers all throughout this, uh, this pathway here. Well, radishes I'm planting back here. Uh, French breakfast radishes are something that I've learned to love growing and eating. I wasn't previously a radish eater, but a friend roasted them for me one time and then I was hooked. Of course, you have to add a lot of oil and salt. Uh, my growing method for radishes is a bit unusual for uh, most home gardeners, I think, because radishes are relatively quick growers, somewhere between 30 to 60 days. Uh, most people just will seed the radishes directly in their garden beds, but I actually multi-sow the radish seed into cell trays uh, like I do with other things. I do that similarly with uh, bunching onions and beets and some other crops. And so then I've got these uh, multiple radishes growing in cell trays uh, in a particular cell and I take them out and I transplant them into the beds. Um, I was skeptical the first time that I did that, that if it would work, but it indeed does. And even if the plant is a little leggy at first from being started under the lights, it, they've come through fine for me in the end. The main thing with radishes is, is really timing because the line between a radish being too spicy and bitter and just sweet with a slight bite the way you might like to eat it, that line is pretty narrow and it's crossed by having uh, radishes in the ground for too long or in my case growing them too long uh, instead of having a nice steady relatively undisturbed uh, growing path from seeding in trays to transplanting into the beds to finally harvesting. So we'll see if I get it right this year but that's one of the things I've got going on back here. My wife, Caroline, has gotten into gardening, kind of. She self-identifies as a fair weather and peak season gardener, mostly. <laughs> I tend to like gardening alone myself. Um, it's a time for me for meditation, listening to books and podcasts, and just general kind of thinking things out for me. Uh, but with my hip on the mend, I need to compromise my normal process a bit. I need, I need to help and I need to collaborate more. So this week I've been working together with my wife to plant out the snapdragons behind us in what we call the round. I started these snapdragons from seed in our basement nursery late January uh, into February. Uh, and then about five weeks ago or so, I moved them into the unheated greenhouse because they tolerate cold and I need to get everything out of the nursery that I can so that I have more space under the lights in the basement for uh, new seeds, other plants. So now we're at the point where we're putting the snapdragons in the ground. And I have to admit, it's actually a bit fun working as a team. 
but perhaps that's because of my role. Um, I'm just going around making plug holes with my staff uh, and I normally would do it that way e anyway, even in, even without the hip issue, because I like to save my back from bending over all the time when I'm making holes for plants. So I go around with this long staff and I make the plug holes, and then um, I can then just put the put the plugs in the holes uh, later. So this time, as I'm doing it, I'm making the holes, and then uh, Caroline, my wife, she's uh, sticking the plugs in the holes for me. And uh, she is now the self-proclaimed in charge of the flowers in the garden. So uh, she's also determining where I make the holes for the snapdragons. I reckon we are planting about 300 to 350 snapdragons around the garden, but I haven't done an official count. That estimate is just from eyeballing the number of 10, 20 trays we have to plant. Well, let's talk about planting endive. I uh, generally don't like to eat endive unless it has a lot of dressing and uh, Parmesan cheese over it. But these plants, uh, when you peel away the outer leaves and you reveal the hearts, the, they're, they're just very beautiful. And as you've probably heard me say before, I garden for the look as much as the utility, actually. Uh, so I grow endive much more than I would ever care to eat it. But I look forward to looking to the good looking plants in the beds, nice kind of heads, um, and then when you peel away the outer leaves, the good looking hearts that are uh, when they're harvested. Uh, similar to other things I grow, I start endive as seeds in my basement nursery. And then once uh, they're kind of up and going well, they're a little more color tolerant than other things. So I get them out from under the lights and I bring them out here to the greenhouse, which is an unheated greenhouse. And then um, now what we've been doing today is uh, putting the plugs from the cell trays into holes that I'm putting into the ground. Um, with the endive here, I would I do put an all-purpose some all-purpose fertilizer uh, that I uh, sprinkle around the holes. So I create the holes, I sprinkle around the all-purpose fertilizer, and then um, actually, due to still working working out my hip, I'm uh, letting my wife Caroline put the put the plugs in the holes. Here's what I seeded this week in the basement nursery: Cape Marigold, African Daisy. Celosia, Pinstamen, Rainbow Blend Coleus, Kale, Chinese Cabbage, Bok Choy, and a second round of Spinach. And here's what we put in the ground this week. Sugar Snap and Shelling Peas, French Breakfast Radishes, and Endive. Onions and Shallots, Snapdragons, and Sweet Peas. So back here, similar to what I've done in prior years, I'm planting peas in this uh, cage kind of area here so they can trellis up the fence. And uh, ideally, typically what we do is we plant the peas there and then in front of the peas, plant something like um, Chinese cabbage or broccoli or something of that nature. Um, probably more of like a Chinese cabbage or a bok choy, something that will uh, grow quickly because when the peas are done in around June-ish is when the pumpkin plants start taking over and the pumpkin plants will take over the entire bed and then uh, we'll trellis them up this uh, cage behind me here. Thank you.